Welcome to the introduction to the Simulation X Heat Transfer Library. In the next few minutes, I'll give an overview of the library's content and demonstrate how to parameterize a heat exchanger and obtain simulation results by building an example model with a fin and tube heat exchanger. I'd like to demonstrate how to use our steady state heat exchangers available within the Heat Transfer Library. The Heat Transfer Library was developed to be the thermal connection between the various ITI fluid libraries. At the moment, there are five steady state heat exchangers available. Fin and tube, double pipe, microchannel, plate, and shell and tube. The heat exchangers in the heat transfer library use a new technology that lets you select which fluid libraries you are using, so you can use the same element for calculations between the pneumatics, hydraulics, and thermal fluids libraries. Once you've selected which libraries you are working with, the ports automatically adapt to your selection. In this first version of the heat exchangers, you also need to select which fluids you are using in the simulation. We hope to soon add functionality that will automatically detect the fluid from the attached connections. In contrast to other heat exchangers in our fluid libraries, the heat exchangers in the heat transfer library are geometry based. We've also included a macro that allows you to visualize the heat exchanger geometry, helping avoid parameterization errors. When the macro button is clicked, a script is carried out that inserts animation bodies into a new simulation model. If we open this model in the 3D view, we can see what the heat exchanger would look like. In this case, we can see that this fin and tube heat exchanger has two tube rows with five tubes per row. All of the heat exchangers automatically detect whether the flows are in a concurrent or countercurrent arrangement. For a double pipe heat exchanger, this is easy to visualize. In the case of the fin and tube heat exchanger, it refers to the general flow direction of the fluid in the case that there are multiple tube rows from front to back. So for instance, a countercurrent arrangement would mean that if the fan was blowing air from the front to the back, then the other fluid would enter the heat exchanger in the back row of tubes and exit at the front row. The important point to note is that the heat exchangers use the ports to determine the flow arrangement. If both mass flows are from port A to port B, or both are from port B to port A, then it uses the equation for co-current flow. If one mass flow is from port A to port B, and the other from port B to port A, it uses the equation for counter-current flow. I'm going to demonstrate how to build a small model to cool air using cold water. We want to cool 3300 cubic meters per hour of air by 5 degrees for a cooling power around 5 kilowatts. We are going to build our cooler model as follows. On the water side, insert two pressure sources from the hydraulics library. A flow source. and two volumes. The heat exchangers in the heat transfer library have no volumes within the element itself, so it's best to always connect a volume to each connection. By double-clicking on the connection, we can open a parameter dialog to set up the fluid. We'll consider heat transfer, but do the calculation without a gas fraction. Water is selected as the working fluid. The inlet and outlet pressures will be set to atmospheric pressure, 0 bar. And the inlet temperature will be set to 6 degrees Celsius. Since we are using this boundary as a sink and want to know the temperature at the water outlet, set the fixed temperature flag to false. We'll set the flow source of the pump to be 0.72 cubic meters per hour. Each of the volumes will have a 10 liter capacity. And the start values will be set to 0 bar and 6 degrees Celsius.
On the air side, we'll also insert two pressure sources from the pneumatics library. A flow source from the pneumatics library. And two volumes. Set the pressures in the pressure sources to be 1 bar and the temperature to be 20 degrees Celsius. Set the volume flow of the fan to be 3300 cubic meters per hour. The start value for the temperatures in the volume should be 20 degrees Celsius. You can set this in the volume, in the connection, or in the pressure source. Since we are also using this boundary as a sink, set the fixed temperature flag to false. Now we'll set up the heat exchanger. Select air as the fluid for the fin side and water as the fluid for the tube side. You can also see on this tab the correlations for the pressure drop and for the heat transfer. Leave these as default for now. Go to the geometry tab. Let's set the height to be 460 millimeters, the width 580 millimeters, and the depth 600. We'll set a fin spacing of 12 millimeters and a tube inner diameter of 8 millimeters. The wall thickness will be 0.5 millimeters. We'll also set up the heat exchanger in a, a cross flow formation with n rows and n passes, according to the VDE Verma Atlas. This heat exchanger will have 10 tube rows, and in each tube row there will be 6 tubes connected in parallel. Finally, set the simulation time to be one hour and turn on the logging property for all result variables. We'll now plot the inlet and outlet temperatures for the heat exchanger, which we can find in the volumes. Let's also add the total heat flow and the heat exchanger efficiency. The heat exchanger is able to transfer just over 5 kilowatts of heat at an efficiency around 50%. In the green line of the upper left diagram, we can see that the outlet water volume starts at a temperature of 6 degrees Celsius. As the water flows through the heat exchanger and into the volume at the outlet, the temperature of that volume rises until it's reached a steady state condition. In comparison, the volume at the air outlet reacts much quicker. Now that we have a simple model set up, we can make the boundary conditions transient or change various geometry parameters to see their influence on the system. To conclude our introduction to the Simulation X heat transfer library, we have seen that the library contains models of fin and tube, double pipe, microchannel, plate and shell and tube heat exchangers. Parameterization of the heat exchangers is done using the heat exchanger geometry, and there is a wide selection of pressure drop and heat transfer correlations available. For a full list of fluids and features, see the library sheet at www.simulationx.com.